watchdog on CentOS infrastructure. Thank you. <clears throat> so we just heard a little bit from, uh, from Fabian about the CentOS infrastructure and sort of how the things are going for um, basically the things that come out of the core SIG. So CentOS Linux and, and the stuff that you would actually use every day. Um, you know, you do, uh, you download a CD, install CentOS, and yum update. That's all the infrastructure that, that Fabian was talking about. What I'm going to talk about a little bit today um, is some of the other things that we're doing in the infrastructure space and some of the public or some of the services that we provide uh, to people in the CentOS community. But before I do that, um, it's probably it would probably be good to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Brian Stinson. I uh, started working um, full time for the CentOS project about a year ago, um, but I've been a long time CentOS user uh, as a sysadmin. Uh, you can find me at uh, bstinsonmhk on Twitter if you uh, want to tweet me or yell at me or whatever. Um, yeah, go ahead and, and uh, find me there. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, I want to talk about some of the resources that we provide and the things that you can do with them. So, you know, we have the, we have the, the sort of stable base of all of those services that Fabian talked about this morning, the mirrors, um, all of the... Uh, the bug tracker, the wiki, all of that stuff is uh, is actually going uh, going really really well. Some of the new things that we're working on uh, is to provide services for people who are wanting to build uh, things on top of CentOS, and that's where things like uh, the account system that he mentioned. Um, we'll talk a little bit about CBS and CI, but um, you know. Fabian sort of dove into a lot of the details of um, of the hardware behind it, and I, I think it's um, that was a really good uh, introduction into some of the things that we can actually do uh, on top of that. So what what we're going to look at today is is sort of a view into a day in the life of a contributor, what you could do on some of the infrastructure things that we provide. So uh, we'll walk through a sort of a short demo of uh, of how to actually get things built into CBS. And impor more importantly, uh, one of the, the real fun things that we're working on right now is our uh, continuous integration setup. And I'll explain a little bit um, about how those work along the way and maybe sort of lift up the covers a little bit and, and show you what we're working, we're working with. Um, the next thing that I like to show, and that, that may be a little bit small uh, print for those of you in the back, so I would apologize for that. But this is actually a graphic that, um, that KB used in one of his talks when he was uh, sort of presenting some of the, his ideas to us of, for how, this, um, how people could contribute and where. And if you think of the, the whole thing kind of like a pipeline, what does um, someone who wants to, to actually get some software out there, they're working on a project, what do they want to do? And depending on which stage in the process they're in, they have a number of different steps. So they start over here on the left with their, their development process. Um, they generate a set of sources, uh, whatever that may be. And in, in the first case, we're going to go through and talk about CBS. Uh, right now, we're talking about RPMs. So how do you get uh, those sources actually um, you know, from, from the source code built into RPMs, tested, and then released? And that all sort of feeds into the, uh, that, that sort of nebulous us user engagement, because you, know, you don't build uh, RPMs in a vacuum. You actually want people to, to go out and use the software that you packaged. So if you, if you put yourself in sort of a mindset of, um, of someone who's building a, a software project, just to, to get a short poll of the room, how many of you um, have actually packaged uh, something into an RPM before? OK, great. We have a, a good set of packagers in here. That's awesome. So you'll, you'll kind of have an, an understanding of how this goes. So how many of you packagers have actually uh, packaged something in Fedora? OK, that's a good subset. Um, how about you know, for your own company or for your own use, just uh, at home on your own machines? OK, good. So those of you that have packaged for Fedora, um, 
you'll sort of be familiar with a lot of the tools that we use uh, in CentOS. And that's sort of, um, that's a little bit deliberate. We want to make it easy for, uh, for contributors to use the tools that they're used to um, and to, you know, we, we do have our own uh, separate ways of, of doing a few things, but we want to make it as, as familiar to you as possible. And so to start off the whole process, um, uh, one thing that, that we should mention is um, the uh, special interest groups that we work with in the CentOS space. And special interest groups are basically just a group of people who are um, gathered around a, um, a common idea. So we have the, the cloud SIG. Um, I, I think right now that's, that's RDO and a couple of other um, uh, people in the cloud space. It's separate projects that are all working together. Uh, and it's nice because those guys can get together and basically solve the problems that they all have in packaging together. Um, so RDO works on, on their packages, they have a problem, they can actually go back to this, their special interest group and they have access to a, a wide set of packagers who are you know, sort of dealing with the same thing. And so once you start grouping people together and you know, getting them into meetings and, and stuff like that, once we provide those resources for people, we actually have to you know, find a way to um, to distribute that and to control access. And so that's where accounts.centos.org comes in. Uh, we just deployed this this past year. Um, and right now it's it's only connected to our CBS setup. But um, you know, like Fabian said, we are planning on expanding this to other roles uh, in the future. I can show you a little bit of what we have here. So let's go over to this tab. Nope. Apologies. Yeah, here we go. So if you've contributed to Fedora before you're familiar with this interface, um, this is just a list of all the groups that we have. Um, so we've got the uh, Atomic SIG, the Cloud SIG, um, and, a, and a couple of other th of those. Basically what we're using uh, the accounts.centos.org system to do right now is just to divide up the build permissions um, in CBS. And we'll... We'll, uh, we'll sort of go through that here in, in just a minute. But um, the process for that, generally what we do is the special interest groups have regular meetings, and that could be every week, every two weeks. It's all dependent on, um, on the group itself. But generally, if you're interested in one of these spaces, um, you can find a page on the wiki with all of those uh, meeting times and who to contact and all that stuff. It's best to go out and sort of introduce yourself, say, hi, I am you know, somebody working on this project and I'd like to join the SIG. And usually what they'll say is um, they'll bring you to a, a special interest group meeting and uh, they'll sort of talk you through the process of how it works. And then once that happens, you can actually get uh, sponsored into the group and get build permissions. So let's talk a little bit about Koji. Um, because CBS is just a, a Koji instance. Um, how many of you are familiar with Koji, your packagers? Yeah, yeah, you're all familiar with Koji. That's good. Um, so CBS is just a, a Koji instance that we have that is specifically for uh, stuff coming out of the special interest groups. And we sort of follow a, a little bit of a pattern because the idea is that we want to scale this out to a number of SIGs. Um, and, and so we kind of want a, a way to identify things in CBS pretty easily. So if you look at the front page of cbs.centos.org, you'll find a lot of things in this scheme, you know, where we have the name of the SIG, the CentOS version that they're building for, so five, six, seven. Um, actually, I think we only do six or seven um, at the moment. But then we do um, a project and a release. Now that may not seem, um, you know, it, that that may seem a little bit opaque. So maybe an example would help. So think of the storage sig. Um, I'm a developer working on Gluster version three three point six. 
a lot of things in CVS would be tagged or uh, would be identified by this um, this identifier right there. And so if you think of the targets, what 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 would that do? You'd have a, a target that you can send your RPMs into, and then you have the the release process that you can go through. So it sticks it into a build route, builds the RPM, sticks it into a place, the candidate repo, where you can do interesting things with it, like send it off to, um, to CI. Um, and then you can send it through the rest of the re release process. And so if you're familiar with Koji, that's, um, that's basically what, what is going on right here. Um, I just did a quick scratch build into that, um, the storage seven tags, just to show you that it, that it works. And this is building, uh, so this would be building Python date util on CentOS 7 um, for the storage SIG. And then that is also very, very tiny, so I apologize. But you can see that we have tasks that go through. This is the, the cvs.centos.org uh, interface there. And you can see that it finished, and you can get all the build logs and stuff. So we actually publish these repositories just like any other Koji instance. You can find the repositories for the various tags. Um, so I think this is, yeah, this is the Gluster stuff coming out of the storage SIG. And you can see that that's the, uh, that's the candidate repos. Generally what we do is we recommend a um, sort of a step-by-step -step process and that's what this is. So you start with the candidate tags, the stuff that you just built in in CBS, and then you run it through um, either CI or something like that, and then you can promote it to do some developer testing. So you send it out to people that you know and love and uh, love your software and are willing to, to sort of help you find some bugs. Uh, you can actually tag the stuff into the testing tags and uh, you can actually talk to KB to uh, get that stuff promoted on buildlogs.centos.org. That's a place where we publish a whole bunch of repos that, and other things that people are going to be hitting uh, quite a bit. So um, once that's promoted to your developers, um, you can promote it again to release. And that actually goes out um, to you know, once you're happy with it. It's, it actually goes out and is signed and promoted and delivered through our mirror system. So your special interest group actually has a separate space under our mirrors that you can distribute all of your packages that, uh, that you decide to release. Some things that we're looking at soon in CBS, um, we're working on some of the tools. So sent package, if you're familiar with uh, fed package in Fedora, um, this would be the, um, uh, the analog to that. We're looking to um, do some things in disk git. So we have, uh, if you go out to the web and type in git.centos.org, right now what that is is that's all of the sources that go into building CentOS 7. We're hoping uh, on down the road to actually deliver some of the, the special interest group content through there. So you'll, ch you'll check in your spec files and, and all that stuff, and then we can build it in Koji from there. Uh, along with that, the look aside cache, this is where you post up all of your sources, um, your source tarballs, so that we have a copy of it that we can use from, um, from CBS. And then we're, we're working on better ways to do intersig dependencies. So let's say that um, the, the cloud sig wants to use a bunch of stuff from the storage sig. I think that's a, a pretty, um, <clears throat> it's pretty fair to say that that's a, a good dependency relationship there. We don't want the cloud sig to have to build all of those dependencies, all of those things it, that the storage sig is already doing. We just want them to rely on the stuff that comes out of there. And some of the things that we're going to have to do in order to make that happen is um, work on a few few things related to testing and, and stuff like that. Um, so to do a, a short, uh, just a quick start for how to get started, 
We provide all the tools that you need to talk to CBS in a package called CentOS Packager. Uh, that's shipped in CentOS Extras, so you know, no need to enable any other repos or anything like that. You just yum install CentOS Packager. Or if you're on a Fedora system, you can uh, use this uh, Coper that we've built, um, and we plan to, uh, to keep that up to date. To, to talk about the actual tools themselves, um, we have user bin CBS. Basically what that is is it's just a, um, a Koji client that uses our profile. So we set that up for you. We ship that in CentOS Packager. Um, so you'll, you, you'll always be sure that you're talking to, uh, to the right instance of Koji. And the other thing is that we ship is a tool called CentOS Cert. When you sign up for your account in accounts.centos.org and you apply for a group, um, or you apply for membership in a group, one thing that you'll need to do is we need a way for Koji to identify you um, as you. And that's what this tool does. It downloads a certificate that you present as a token up to, uh, to CBS. So once you have your account, all you have to do is just uh, type in CentOS cert and then give it your username and tell it that you wanted to generate a new certificate. Type in your password, and you can see that it drops it in your home directory right there. Um, and then you can talk to CBS. So that's what I did right there. I just used my new certificate to, uh, uh, to contact the Koji Hub. So that was sort of a, a lightning walkthrough of CBS itself. It's uh, there's there's quite a bit of activity going in there right now. So if you if you saw one of those SIGs on the on the page up there that you're interested in, if you're working in an upstream project that you think would fit somewhere, uh, definitely do reach out to those SIGs and and get involved there. Or come find one of us. We're um, we're always happy to talk about uh, new groups of people who are. Uh, who are working in that space. So next I'd like to talk, talk a little bit about ci.centos.org, because this is one of the other um, really big sort of public infrastructure things that we're, we're sorting to provide to people. Um, <clears throat> and it's something that I've, I've been working on during my day job uh, for the past little bit. Our target audience, uh, num you know, if you're a if you're a special interest group, you're building packages in CBS. This is sort of something that you get basically for free. We'll we'll give you a space in CI. You can uh, do whatever tests it is that you like. Uh, take the packages that you build, stick them in there. Do your um, I don't know unit tests. You can test the the repos themselves. Test the dependencies. Really, whatever it is that you that you need to do. But we're also looking at infrastructure projects that want to verify on CentOS. So if you think about what that means, um, one, of the, one of the big projects that we're, we're sort of happy to have in ci.centos.org is RDO. What they do <clears throat> is they take the, all of the packages that they produce out of CBS, and they actually have a, an entire long test suite of things that they do. They spin up an OpenStack cloud and, and do various things to verify that those packages have worked, but also that the set of packages that they have work well together. And the idea is to do this in, in an environment that looks more or less like what you would get if you were to hand this off to a sysadmin and say, OK, go deploy RDO. So like I said, they actually spin up an OpenStack cluster and, and run all these tests. And you might think that that's a little bit, uh, a little bit daunting, or a little bit slow, um, but it all comes back to sort of the way that we do things in CI. We have bare metal machines that are provisioned more or less on demand with CentOS five, six, or seven. We have Jenkins to actually orchestrate the jobs. And finally, we have a place that you can actually store off all of the, the stuff that is generated by your test run. 
so some people actually do um, you know, nightly builds or, or something like that in their CI runs, and they want a way to actually store off all of those packages, um, images, whatever it is. So we need a place for them to, uh, to store the artifacts in their logs and stuff. Now these bare metal machines, I think right now, um, the, the cool thing is it's all behind a, uh, a, a set of chassis. We have four of them. And it's all API driven. So if we want, you know, four network interfaces and two disks or something like that, the, the fabric itself can support that sort of thing. Um, in general, we provision with uh, a single disk on there. And then uh, we have the, the network interfaces that are up and available for people to configure. And that's all done by a tool called Duffy. So each project is assigned its own API key. And that API key is used to request those, uh, those nodes in which, whichever configurations we support. So if you want um, CentOS 5 32-bit, you just ask Duffy for it, and it'll give you a machine. Duffy contextualizes that machine um, and basically takes your SSH key and injects it into the root account. So once this machine is up and running and you know, the, the call returns and says, OK, you have this machine, you actually have full root access on, um, on bare metal hardware that you can use to do your tests. And obviously, there's, you do other things afterwards. Uh, you run your tests, do, um, uh, do any sort of verification you want. Then you actually return that that node back to us, and we'll reinstall it and um, give it away to someone else freshly installed. So this graphic sort of, sort of shows a little bit of about the architecture. Um, if you're coming in from the internet, you can everything is done on the project side. So if you're a, a project member or something like that, you can get through our jump host and onto a Jenkins slave. Now this part is, um, if you've done continuous integration before, this part is a little bit, um, I don't know, kind of freaky and a little bit weird to some people uh, because it's not immediately obvious what's happening here. So you're actually landed on the slave, that's slave01.ci.centos.org. You have a workspace there, but that's not actually where your tests are running. We actually want you to, um, to work in a pattern where the slave, so your, your workspace that you land in, that's the place where you just request those nodes. You request that bare metal hardware, and then remotely from your workspace there, talk to those, those machines and do your tests. And that's, that can happen over um, SSH or you know, whatever it is that you like. But uh, Duffy itself is just an HTTP API. And uh, I'll, I'll give you some links to a couple of clients and some scripts that you can use to actually make things a little bit easier on yourself when you're, uh, when you're working with jobs. But again, we have the, the Jenkins master. That actually talks to your workspace there to uh, trigger out those jobs and, and deploy those things. And so in the job life cycle, basically, we provision a machine for you, you do your tests, you call an API that says, OK, yep, I've done my tests. I have all of my results. I've copied off everything I need. Um, let's send it back. And then we start the process all over again. We just set up that, that machine over and over and over and over. And I think um, Fabian mentioned in his talk last time that uh, we do, we're doing about 100 deploys a day something like that, um, and we're looking to, uh, to get a little bit faster with that even. So there are a couple of links to some Duffy clients. If you want a simple one that you can just copy and paste into a Jenkins job, uh, look at that top link right there. That's pretty, a pretty good quick start to get you, um, to get you going and, uh, and started with, uh, with that. And then we actually had some people in the uh, RDO community who are using our infrastructure quite extensively, and they wanted a, uh, a little bit better uh, interface for them to hook into their tools. And so they wrote a, a 
Python uh, client library that you can use. And I do know that a couple of other projects are, are looking into that. Um, <clears throat> but so that provides not only a Python client library, but also a command line tool that you can request and, and uh, replace machines in Duffy. So what's coming up next? Uh, one of the features that we're working on in ci.centos.org is to take those machines and actually group them together so that you have a, a, the same network across um, you know, all the four, five, six chassis, that, or four, five, six uh, machines that you have. Right now, they all have um, interfaces on them into our CI network, so they can get to the, the mirrors, they can get to the internet, all of that stuff. But some projects have asked for a separate network that's you know maybe a little bit isolated. So they want to test out um, a storage configuration. They have a, sto a separate storage network, or um, they have a separate uh, virtual machine network for their OpenStack deploy. That's one thing that we're looking to do uh, to sort of tie all those things down. We're working closely with uh, Jenkins, some people using Jenkins Job Builder. Because once you have a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of things to test, it gets kind of tedious to go through the Jenkins web interface and create. You know, I want to test this thing with this thing and this thing with this thing. It's it gets really, really, really tedious to go through and create all those jobs by hand. So Jenkins Job Builder can automate a whole lot of that. We're hoping to uh, spin up an OpenStack instance soon. So we have the bare metal that is run on CentOS. Um, you know, you get those those machines there. But OpenStack would allow people to, number one, consume that service and test against the cloud um, paradigm there. But then also for them to bring um, their own images. So we have a couple of groups that are looking to verify on CentOS, but you know, maybe do a lot of other unit testing on um, on some other operating systems. We want to make it easy for them to bring along their own images. Um, you know, I don't particularly want to be running a whole bunch of Ubuntu stuff, uh, but they're welcome to bring their images that they um, that they have and verify those unit tests too, because that's that provides some value to the project. Let me show off Jenkins just a little bit. If I can get over here. Here we go. Um, yeah, so if you go to ci.centos.org, you'll actually see over on the left here, we provision the workspace for every, um, every project. And then you can see the whole set of jobs that we have. So this, um, these here are the, some of the core jobs. The, uh, the people who put out CentOS Linux actually run through functional tests every night and then also um, on updates. So if there's ever an update that, that goes through, we do some pre-update checks uh, that all run on, on ci.centos.org, and you can see them up there. So let's look at a quick um, job run here. So I mentioned that I was working on a tool called Cent Package, and I want to run my unit tests. That's something I want to verify on CentOS. Um, and of course, live demos. Here we go. What Jenkins does, um, when I actually go out and call to Duffy, get a machine, and SSH into, uh, into there, I can, all of these logs are actually piped back into the Jenkins interface. So everything that I do is here, and you can see that, you know, if we, go, if we were to go back up, uh, you could see that this test passed. But everything that I did during my whole entire test run is saved off in this interface, and consumable by you guys. So if you're interested in Scent Package, or you're interested in RDO, or you're interested in um, CentOS 7 itself, you can go, go back and see what tests were run, what tests were, um, if it's a failed run, what, you know, what caused the problem, anything like that. Um, and if you see something, we're always happy to, uh, to be notified about, about that. But we get emails and pages and, and all that stuff. So 
we're sort of in the beginning process of, uh, of standing up this service and working with a bunch of those infrastructure projects. So if you are one and you want to, uh, to sort of partner with us on, on that verification, uh, do let us know because one thing that we're working with, with people is, um, one thing we've noticed is that everyone sort of has a different, uh, different test setup. And we're happy to help sort of accommodate that and add features um, as projects need. So yeah, definitely do, uh, do come talk to us. Here are some links uh, that talk a little bit about the community build system, about our special interest group process, and about CI, and a, a little bit of contact information. Usually we hang out on uh, CentOS Devel for a mailing list. Um, or in Freenode, and there's my uh, email address and my Twitter if you're interested in getting involved in this process. So that is all I have for you guys today. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Yeah. No, so we're we're doing a copper because the um, the velocity right now is going to be pretty quick. Um, the The plan is to get it in Fedora proper uh, and get it reviewed once we sort of stabilize a little bit. It's I would probably call that um, sort of in beta status right now um, in terms of the client tools. So, yeah, I definitely will. Yeah, the diskit. Yeah, so the, um, yeah, sure. Uh, the, the question is, is there going to be a policy um, on the diskit branches to, um, to sort of help facilitate people working on the same package? And I think that part um, might be a little bit uh, up in the air, one of the things that we're that we need to work on first is getting the integration done uh, with the account system, and the the actual policies themselves um, might come out soon after that. Um, but that's, I think that's something that we should maybe talk about. Okay, yeah, so the question is, um, is there any sort of bit-for-bit uh, uh, -bit reproducible builds um, uh, effort going on? And I don't know of one. Um, basically, the, so the, the distribution itself isn't actually built in CBS. Uh, that's still the same process that it's always, always been. We take um, uh, the sources and build them. But, um, but yeah, I don't know of, of any sort of effort in the project that's working on that. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah, so let's actually take a look at that. And we'll hope for good conference Wi-Fi. <laughs> so let's actually take a look at, um, yeah, we've got plenty of time. So under git.centos.org, um, you'll actually find this project that says uh, sources for RPMs shipped. And if you click on that, and this is going to take a little bit because we have a ton of RPMs in there. Um, but this is, so this is the, everything that goes into uh, CentOS 7. So if you see something that comes out through an, an update or something like that, um, that's all going to be in here. And of course, we're waiting for, um, yeah, here we go. So let's look at bind. Oops. Sorry, I'm trying to read this on the... Uh, there we go. Yep, so if you come to the C7 branch, that's going to be all of the sources that we have. And if you look, B 
basically what we've done is uh, taken the source RPMs and, and sort of exploded it into this directory. So you have the spec file under specs, um, and then this metadata file in there. That actually pulls from our, uh, our look aside that we have uh, set up separately for the sources coming into the distribution. Does that, does that answer your question? Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Yes, they do. Um, and, and that's all set up through, um, so uh, initially what, what happens is the SIG is, is sort of onboarded into the, the build process. And we have people go through a few builds and publish those to uh, the build logs section. That stuff on build logs is unsigned. Um, so we, we sort of have people uh, point their developers at it, people who are early adopters, but th that's not really for production use. Once the SIG is ready to, to actually start doing the release process, you know, the full-fledged release process, they work with one of the people in the core SIG to, um, uh, to basically say, okay, these are the packages that we're going to promote to, um, to mirror.centos.org, and those get signed. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, so the question is um, the the diskette layout that we're showing here um, is is different from the one in Fedora, and the question is, are we going to uh, to do that for the special interest groups? And the really the the answer to that is no. Um, this is the layout that we're working with, and the idea is once we um, you know once we have people actually pushing up to these repositories, they're actually going to have a separate branch for the special interest group. So if someone wanted to come and rebuild bind uh, in a sig, they would have a, a specific branch for that. And so we need to to sort of maintain this layout uh, for that. Other questions? All right. Thank you very much. I have stickers up here if you want uh, community build service stickers. Um, otherwise, uh, find me around the conference. Thanks, guys.
resolution for it. I'm making sure I'm going to change it. Uh, I needed to, I was switching to, to, to uh, I had to set the resolution at 800 by 7. Oh, oh, no, great good. So what resolution do you need? So just in case uh, this happens again. So uh, 800 by 600. 800 by 600, cool. Um, there was probably another session chair introducing it, whereas in Iraq did. 